Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a brand new super fun video. We are talking about the best DIY projects to improve your home. This video is meant to inspire you to complete all of those little home projects you have in the house. Whether you have five minutes, 15 minutes, or if you're really lucky, an entire hour, consider this video your sign to get to those home improvement projects that you've been meaning to tackle. Ever since having kids, my home improvement to-do list has completely multiplied. I mean, between caring for them, carving out time for self-care, where do you find the time to address your home's needs? You don't have to be the handiest person out there or even know how to use a power tool to tackle a lot of the items on my list. I find that most people's apprehension when it comes to little home improvement projects is not knowing where to begin. You don't know the right tools to use, you don't have the right resources, you don't have a list of items and materials that you need laid out in front of you so that you could get to these home projects. In this video, I'll be sharing all of my favorite DIY home projects that I've done myself and little helpful home hacks along the way to improve your life and the efficiency of your working home. I'll also let you know how long it took me to complete each project so you're a little bit more realistic with your time, energy, and efforts. So without further ado, let's get right into the easy DIY home projects. By far, the easiest DIY project you could do right now is spray painting. Now, why would you need to spray something? Maybe you have an existing piece of furniture or an old frame that just needs a little bit of a touch-up. You might have changed up the look, the vibe, the color palette of a specific room in your home and you want the finishes to match. All all you need is a can of spray paint and a mask. All of my spray painting is done outdoors in a well-ventilated area. I love that my courtyard is private because I'll just kind of lay everything on the floor and get to spray painting it without anyone looking in. If you have a private space outside your home, like your courtyard or your backyard, it's the best place to get your spray painting project on so that you don't have nosy neighbors peeking in. I've spray painted everything from old frames to old furniture pieces to wood wall brackets and brass candelabras. I mean, there is nothing that a fresh can of spray paint won't accomplish. Moving on to my DIY bar. I have this bookshelf that you might have caught in the dining room makeover that I converted into a makeshift bar. What I needed was a space to hold all of my wine glasses. I found this really inexpensive metal wine glass holder from Amazon and with less than five minutes time, I was able to install this on the underside of my shelves with just my power drill and the screws that they provided. If you're looking to add some decorative objects into your home and you have old vases laying around or even some old lamps, you might want to try refinishing them with an earthy organic stoneware look. With just some baking soda, water, and an old paintbrush, you could give all of these pieces a brand new finish and make it look so much more expensive than it really is. I've applied the same type of finish to old vases, glass jars, even an old brass lamp that I wanted to update with a ceramic look. The resulting look is high-end, it's custom, and it looks so much more luxurious than its original finish. Another really easy project that you can tackle this week is mounting artwork and accessories. You might be sitting in your room right now and staring at all of these blank white walls trying to figure out what you should install on them. If you have an old canvas lying around, you can easily paint over it with your own artwork. I love to search online at my favorite home decor sites like Anthropology, Urban Outfitters, even Z Gallery or Minted.com has really amazing artisan artworks for me to kind of mimic the same look, the vibe, or even the color palette. I'll always have an inspiration photo on hand before I tackle my DIY art piece. Before you stop to ask me how do you even mount all of these frames and these canvases, I have an entire video that shows you how. Definitely check out my video on how to hang pictures like a pro. I actually did this video, I think I was like six or seven months pregnant with Kamari, so there is no excuse to why you can't hang up your artwork this week. I know painting old furniture is a really popular trend right now and it's not something that I recommend for every single piece of furniture in your home, especially if the piece already has a really beautiful wood finish that you can actually restore. However, if you already have a piece of wood furniture that is painted in a color that you don't love, the easiest way for you to refinish the look is with a coat of chalk paint. The great thing about chalk paint is there is very minimal prep work. You don't need to sand the piece, you don't need to prime the piece, all you need to do is wipe it down and clean it before you you start with that first coat of paint. 
You might remember that my old entry console was this hot pink color, which I absolutely loved because it coordinated with my hot pink dining chairs. But ever since I got rid of those old brass dining chairs, the hot pink just really stood out. So I wanted to neutralize it with this French gray color. I really love that Annie Sloan's chalk paint did the job and I was able to complete this project in about a half a day's worth of time. The only reason why it took that long is because of course you need that time for it to dry in between coats before you slap on another coat of paint. This project is so easy to do even if it takes just a little bit more time. I am a huge fan of indoor plants. There are so many plant videos that I have on the channel now. I am obsessed with that jungalo look. The great thing about indoor plants is that there are so many ways for you to style them in your home. I actually have a video on how to style indoor plants, but my favorite way is to hang them from the ceilings. Now, how do I do this? It's really, really, really simple. Depending on how heavy your plant is, you'll need to look for the right type of hook to support that weight. The plants that I've hung in my home are really, really lightweight. Including the weight of the pot, they're less than five pounds. So I found these really lightweight hooks that I simply screwed up into my ceiling. I use macrame plant hangers that I actually purchased from Amsterdam on my honeymoon. So to me, not only do I get to style all of my indoor plant hangers, but it has sentimental value as well. A designer's tip is that next time you're on vacation, always look for home goods. You'll be able to style your home with all of these beautiful trinkets that remind yourself of when you're on vacation. This next home improvement item is so, so easy to do and so essential to the function of all of your furniture pieces. I can't wait for my husband to come home from work when I simply need to move a piece of furniture, especially if it's not centered on a wall, if it's not aligned. So felt pads on all of my furniture pieces are not only functional, but they're absolutely essential and necessary. A key tip to applying felt pads on all of my furniture pieces on the undersides of your chairs or your tables, your beds, or even your nightstands and your dressers is to make sure that you apply a really thin dollop of super glue to them before you attach them to the underside of your furniture. The reason you need to do this is because the adhesive that comes with the felt pad is never strong enough to actually stay on the furniture pieces, especially when you have a super hefty piece of furniture like my dining table or even the dining chairs that get moved around all the time. If your dining chairs are on hard flooring like mine is without a rug underfoot, it's so easy for you to glide these chairs in and out and they never get stuck on the floor. These felt pads not only protect your furniture, but they also protect your flooring as well. Another super easy DIY project that you could do right now that's going to elevate the look of your home is to swap out your cabinet handles. I've done this with multiple cabinets in my entire home from my nightstands, my dressers, my bathroom cabinets to my kitchen hardware. If you're swapping out a knob, it's so simple since there's only one hole, but if you're swapping out a handle to handle, make sure that you measure the inside width of those cabinet handles so you're swapping them out for a handle with the exact same center width. If you're like me, you might hate miscellaneous items cluttering your kitchen countertop. The less items, the better, which is precisely why I decided to mount my paper towel rack underneath my floating shelf. And I also added some coffee mug hooks so I can hang my coffee cups as well. I found these items off of Amazon and I love that they added a custom element to my kitchen shelves as well. My paper towel rack is hung conveniently right next to my sink and my coffee mug station is hung conveniently next to my coffee bar. Speaking of towel bars, if you don't have a double towel bar rack mounted in your bathroom right now, how are you even hanging up your towels? Did you know that the correct way to hang and dry a body towel is on a towel bar? I used to think that wall hooks would suffice, but I recently learned that towel bars are the only way to efficiently dry your towels. A key designer's tip is to measure the width of your towel before specifying that towel bar. I used to have a towel bar that was too small for the width of my towels. Your towels actually have to hang straight over the bar for it to dry effectively. After learning that my towels were actually 27 inches in width, I had to swap from a smaller towel bar to a 30 inch wide towel bar. And that really made all of the difference in the world. No more scrunchy towels, no more half dry towels. I know that's just a really small detail, but for someone who's OCD like me, it really makes all the difference in the world. This next home improvement project is for all of your accessories in your closet, like your necklaces and your scarves. 
I talk about this on the channel quite a bit. If I wasn't an interior designer, I would probably be a professional organizer. I love to find really clever and efficient ways to organize all of the items that I have in my home. My mantra is, if you don't see it, you won't use it. So for me, hanging all of my accessories, like my necklaces and my scarves in plain sight is the only way for me to use them on the daily. In my closet, I display my necklaces on belt racks that I've installed at varying heights. I actually took the time to measure the length of all of my necklaces ranging from short to medium to long, and that is where I demarcated the heights of all of these belt racks. Not only do I get to see all of my necklaces in plain sight, but they make this really beautiful elevation that almost looks like a piece of art. I've used so many different ways to hang my scarves and my favorite way is without any power tools at all. If you have an empty niche in your home, this is the perfect opportunity for you to repurpose this area for all of your scarves and accessories. First, you need to measure the opening of your niche and then you can look for the appropriate size tension rod. I use two different tension rods and I installed them at different heights to accommodate all of my scarves. What you get is really easy access to all of your scarves and bonus points for this beautiful burst of color in your closet. For this next section of projects, I consider them to have a medium level of difficulty. They might not necessarily be more difficult to tackle, but they might just take a little bit more time to complete. Hanging wall mirrors. Hanging mirrors has everything to do with measuring the space appropriately and finding the right support hardware for the job. You need to know the weight of the mirror first before you go out and purchase the supporting hardware. They'll have brackets and hanging hardware that say for 50 pounds, for 100 pounds, for 200 pounds. Next is looking for a stud to anchor the piece. You could use a stud finder to do this. You could go the old fashioned route by kind of pounding on the wall. I always make sure that I use anchors, especially when screwing into drywall. Next comes installing window treatments. We're talking everything from curtain rods to window shades to those custom treatments that you're meaning to hang up in your home. Every single window treatment you see in my home right now has been hung up by me all by myself. I typically don't need another hand to do this because the brackets go first, the rods go after that, then finally your curtain panels. I did however need a second hand to install those window shades because they're a little bit heavier since everything comes in one packet. Let's talk about hanging a gallery wall. I've been hanging gallery walls since I was really a teenager. It started with all of those posters that instead of taping up, I didn't like the look of exposed tape, so I wanted to conceal it with hardware in the back. I mean, it used to be an ordeal, but now I consider myself an expert. I have this really easy gallery wall hack that I implement all the time, and all you need is painter's tape. The first thing you need to do is figure out your composition. Whether you want your gallery in a row, whether you want your gallery on a grid, figure out the composition and measure accordingly. Your next step is to flip over all of your frames right side down so that you find where all of the holes are for you to hang up all the hardware. Next, you'll tear out a piece of tape and you'll lay it right over the back of your frames. Using a pen or a screw, you'll make tiny puncture holes directly on the painter's tape. Next, you'll remove the painter's tape from the back of the frame and place it right over your walls. Next, you'll place the screws directly over the holes and drill them into the wall. You can also use a screwdriver to do this. And voila, a perfect photo gallery every single time. If you're like me, you might be changing out all of your photos on every single gallery wall probably every other month. How do you patch up all of those tiny little holes in the wall? I always keep a small arsenal of tools and materials together according to their function. If I need to patch up small holes, my spackle, my putty, my sander, my paint is all conveniently located in one drawer. That way it makes all of these DIY projects so much more efficient and easier to tackle on the fly. I have this cabinet in my husband's closet that's really the bane of my existence. Every time I do his laundry and I'm putting the clothes away, I can't even get these drawers to slide out and glide back with ease. It's such an old piece of furniture that the soft clothes glide hardware is just not so soft anymore. I thought that this was going to be so much more difficult than I anticipated, but after installing it, it was so much easier than I thought and it really only took 10 minutes. I simply removed the old glides and I measured that track. I searched on Amazon and I found this new pair that cost me less than $15. I was able to install the new soft closed drawer glides on this middle drawer and now I want to tackle the top and the bottom. 
I don't even know why I lived with these janky drawers for so long. It was just one of those tasks that was looming on my growing to-do list and now I feel so much better that it's done. We are finally getting to that last section, the difficult DIY projects. When I say difficult, that really just means that there's a slight learning curve and it's going to take you more time to complete the project. We are mainly talking about my DIY bathroom makeover. If you've been following my channel for quite some time, you'll know that I hated my guest bathroom. It was the last room in my home for me to address because for me, it just felt like it was a lot of work and it actually was. But after I chunked it down into little projects every single day, I was able to complete the entire bathroom makeover in less than two weeks worth of time. I did everything myself from painting over the old shower tile to stenciling over the old tile flooring. I also removed the pedestal sink with the help of my husband since it was so heavy, but I was able to install a new vanity with new plumbing, a new faucet, new shower fixtures, a new mirror, and new wallpaper on the ceiling for a complete bathroom makeover. Anything that has to do with structural work or electrical work, I always leave up to the pros. I'll be ending this video with my key designers tip. Number one is to make a list and chunk it down. I always make a list on my phone and add to it as I think of it. Every time I walk into a room in my home, I scrutinize it from top to bottom. It's a blessing and a curse, but I find all of these little home projects that I want to get to and I make this running list of notes on my phone. That way, if I know that I have a little bit of time this weekend, I'll know what to tackle first. I'll chunk it down so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. And by weekend's end, I would have checked off one more task on that list and I feel so much more accomplished as a result. Another design tip is to keep all of your small tools conveniently located within your home. Not the garage, not the shed in your backyard, literally inside your house. I have this small decorative tower that I'm actually looking at right now. It sits in between my dining room and my lounge and it houses all of my small tools and equipment. That way, should the mood strike and I wanna get to something really quickly, I have it right within reach and I can finish it in less than 10 minutes time. I am not someone who procrastinates. I am super obsessive by nature. So for me, it stresses me out more to procrastinate and think about something versus just doing it right away. So my key designers tip for you when it comes to your home projects is the minute you think of it, purchase the materials you need and give yourself a deadline to do it. If you give yourself a month to complete something, you'll take a month. But if you only give yourself two days to do it, guess what? You're gonna complete it in probably less than two days. Have I always been handy? Absolutely not. But for me, I love to learn new skills, new tips, new tricks, especially when it comes to my home. I walk around my house now and to know that I had a hand in installing everything, mounting everything, painting everything, styling it, designing it, decorating. There's nothing that brings me more satisfaction than knowing that I created and designed this life for myself and my family to enjoy. I think that's where the fascination lies with the DIY creators and watching all of these YouTube videos. To see something magnificent and incredible created from just a pile of materials to me is so rewarding. I have full length in-depth videos for a lot of these projects that I spoke about in this video. So definitely check out my DIY playlist on the channel now for more inspiration when it comes to your next home project. You might also want to check out two of my most popular DIY videos, what's in my toolbox and how to hang pictures like a pro. If you like this type of content and you want to see more DIY on the channel, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know which of these projects you would like to tackle this weekend in your own home. Share this video with anyone you know who's looking for some new DIY projects to tackle and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the video every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.